Greetings from Indian Medical Association. I am Dr. K. K. Agarwal, Honorary Secretary General, Indian Medical Association. And with me is Dr. Krishna Ganpati, who is the President of Apollo Telemedicine Network Foundation. This is a part of IMA Leadership Lecture Series. And today's discussion is on telemedicine. I will have some brief in, uh, interaction with Dr. Ganpati and after that Dr. Ganpati fo will follow it up with a PPT uh, presentation come lecture on telemedicine. Uh, Dr. Ganpati, my, 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 my thing is that when we talk about telemedicine, you will be talking about what it is in your lecture. But my concern is that today we don't have a regulation, we don't have a code of conduct. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking, only talking about telemedicine, I'm talking about digital health as a whole. Say for example, teleconsultation. There is a Supreme Court judgment which talks about is that no telephony consultation unless it is an emergency. So is, is there a need in the country? Because telemedicine today or tomorrow is going to be a household thing. It will be a part of normal practice. Uh, is there a need for coming out with our own digital code of contact, which IMA is contemplating and is making it? and so that uh, the digital health is also regularized. Absolutely. When I was the president of the Telemedicine Society of India, we formed a subcommittee and we have done some preliminary work and we have made a draft as well. We have extensively studied the regulations in different parts of the world. Unfortunately, we cannot ipsilateral transform it like this. So I totally agree with you. And every time whenever I talk on telemedicine, invariably this is the question I'm asked, what are the me medical legal repercussions or implications? The answer I give is always the same. I do not know. And I do not think I will ever know. Having said that, I don't think we need to be worried about possible medical legal implications for the simple reason it's going to take several years before the court decides unless regulations are passed. No, I'm talking about self-regulations. We IMA come forward with the self-regulations. Yes, I so think. So that we know what is uh, ethical, what is non-ethical. I think it's. I'll, I'll give you an example that that in Medical Council of India very clearly talks about it that privacy of a person should not be, uh, privacy has to be maintained. If there is a disclosure about protected health information called PHI, then there is a violation of law. So the yes. law is existing. Yes. yes. Similarly, you have IT laws. One of the law has been in uh, yes, recently, uh, stepped, recently down. stepped down by the Supreme, Supreme Court. Court. But still, Medical Council of India, you cannot disclose the identity of a person. The identity of a person internationally comes into the HIPAA law and in India it comes into MCI into privacy and the word is protected health information. Yes, yes. Okay, unless you are told by the law or by investigating agency or by the patient authorized person, you cannot disclose. Really? And in electronic media, Absolutely. there is no guarantee. Yes. Because there is no guarantee. We recently have a couple of cases where the doctors have been jailed for releasing the photograph of a person on a WhatsApp. Yes. So, so don't you think that that telemedicine uh, requires clear-cut guidelines, which IMA is working on, to 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 have so that now today uh, every buddy is coming out with a portal. He is uh, providing services to the doctors, and he is charging fee from the patient, providing service to the doctor, and charging, and he is uh, keeping the service charges that may amount to commission, they may, they may amount to fee transfer, fee splitting and that Medical Council of India doesn't permit. So what is ethical, what is not? Say for example, if somebody calls me up that I am making a website, I want to put your profile there and I will attract patients and I will divert patients to you. Okay, is that allowed? Is fee, if, if I pay for my service charges to them, I do pay to the hospitals, to them, is it allowed? Even I may not have such answer. Therefore, before courts decide, let's come out with a code of conduct, which is a self-code of conduct, so that we know what, we define what is ethical and what is not unethical, instead of waiting for the Supreme Court to decide what is ethical and what is not ethical. Absolutely. I'm delighted that the IMA is taking these proactive measures. And as a past president of the Telemedicine Society of India, I think the Telemedicine Society of India would be very happy to also work in close collaboration with the IMA so that our energies are spent constructively and synergistically. I think it's a great idea and I think the time has come for you to do this. And, and now 24th uh, 
मार्च वी हैव डिक्लेयर्ड इज एज आई एम ए टेली मेडिसिन ऑन दैट डे वी विल बी राइटिंग टू अवर सेवेंटीन हंड्रेड ब्रांचेस टू टू प्रमोट इट एंड टेली मेडिसिन डजन मीन ओनली वीडियो कॉन्फ्रेंसिंग टेली मेडिसिन इज एज एज ए वास्ट इट इंक्लूड सो मेनी सब्जेक्ट ऑल ऑफ दीज थिंग्स विल बी कवर्ड कैन वी पब्लिकली नाउ अनाउंस दैट ऑन ट्वेंटी फोर्थ मार्च टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन the ima will come with a white paper which will encompass all this absolutely see tomorrow we have a, it will be it wonderful if we can do this 101% next year the first year anniversary of uh, ima telemedicine day we have to come big, out with it will this. be a big event wonderful sir. and before that we will have all uh, regulations regulations Excellent. digital health protected health information we already have made yes. digital health draft we already have made we already have made a social media uh, code of conduct we already have had drafts these drafts now are being circulated for opinion so that it becomes a ima policy to that that would be wonderful so so that's what ima is doing and let's now listen to dr k ganpati what he has to uh, say scientifically all about telemedicine <laughs> 